Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir. I'm joined today by Martel. You can find him at the Miami Heat Zone podcast. And for today's episode, we have another guest joining us on the program. Excited that we have Threat from the, the Basement Sports Network. What's going on, Threat? Another day in paradise. Another beautiful day. I can't complain. You know how it goes. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Love the work you guys do on the Basement Sports Network. Post game shows are hilarious. So happy to have a conversation with you today. So there's not a lot going on right now in the news with the Miami Heat. We know the draft is coming up, what, in two or three weeks. We could talk about that perhaps. But I think the biggest thing that we're waiting on right now, obviously, is the, the Jimmy Butler extension. And we heard from Jimmy and Bernie Lee that he wants to stay in Miami, but he wants that max. He wants that two-year $110 or $113 million extension, whatever it is. And we know Pat Riley, though, before they came out saying they wanted the max, he said in his press conference, hey, we don't even have to extend them yet. We could wait till next year. And we haven't really heard a, a rebuttal from Jimmy outside of him and Bernie saying they're like, we're going to ask for it on July 7th. So this can go a lot of different ways. And there's all these rumors and speculation that, that Jimmy could be traded. And, and we see a lot of teams stirring the pot right now saying, hey, if you don't extend them, we will. So there's Golden State saying they probably, you know, trade for him. There's Philadelphia and there's like possibly the Rockets and some anonymous teams. So anyway, we've been talking to some guests and they've been saying they think the Miami Heat are going to trade Jimmy Butler. Like in a like amicable, amicable, I can't even say the word, amicable way where they're probably just going to ask Jimmy, like, where do you want to go? Like, do you want to go to Philly? Do you want to go here? Because we're not going to extend you. That's the vibe they're getting from the front office. And we know our front office can be cheap at times, too. So I don't know. How do you think this whole extension piece is going to play out? Do you think the Heat are going to cave and give it to him this offseason? Do you think they're going to actually wait and see what happens? And then who knows what can happen? Jimmy could walk as a free agent and say, all right, I'm out. I have an option. I'm not going to pick it up. You guys lose me for nothing. Or does he say behind the scenes, like, hey, just trade me so you guys get something. I go where I want to go. What do you think I'll, is going to happen and what do you want to happen? Is it guess I, the question? I'm going to be real with you. I, I think the Heat are going to cave in. They're going to give Jimmy what he wants. I don't think they want a, a replay of how the Wade situation uh, played out. Not to say that Jimmy Butler is Dwayne Wade, even though some fans were talking crazy, saying that he's already a, a, a better legend than Dwayne Wade. I hate Heat Twitter, by the way. They, they just talk nonsense. But um, I think they're going to cave in just because they don't want to replay that last situation. And I think it kind of leaves a sour taste in everybody's mouth as far as um, how the Heat tr uh, treat some of their legends. Um, if Jimmy kind of, if they, if they decide to trade Jimmy, how does that kind of look? Um, when you didn't pay Dwayne Wade, um, you didn't pay, uh, Jimmy Butler, it kind of looks kind of fishy. It kind of looks iffy. I don't know how it plays out to, to the masses, but I just don't know if that's a great look. Now, with that being said, <laughs> my brother, I am on the trade Jimmy bandwagon. Um, shout out to Jimmy. Shout out to the years that he gave us. Um, salute. It was a great run. Um, but we got to blow this motherfucker up. We got to blow this thing up. Um, I feel like for some reason, I feel like that 20, that 2008 ish, 2010 ish, um, Atlanta Hawks, that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from this heat team and this ownership in the front in the front office. Like, are we just content with being a competitive team or do we actually want to win? Because I'm not seeing the shit that you need to put in front to be an ultra competitive contender like team. I'm seeing team uh, a team that's content. You're running it back. You're running it back. What have you done in the Jimmy Butler era? Like what's the move that was like, wow, okay, we really want to win this thing. Outside of year 1 when we put some guys together, what was the move to you guys to be like, okay, we really did this thing? Kyle Lowry. <laughs> the the problem is threat we don't talk about the travesty that Kyle Lowry was. He came here, mind you, he knew he was coming to the Miami Heat. And I respect the Miami Heat because they went to Jimmy and said, yo, who do you want? And he said, PJ, and I want Kyle Lowry. Cool. We bring him over. But if Kyle Lowry is going to come over here, $90 million on our books, $30 million a year, Disgusting. we could have probably got two high-level role players every year for that price. He came over here out of shape, overweight, eating burgers and shakes and refused to get in shape and got upset when Pat Riley called him out. Gabe Vincent took his starting role in the playoffs multiple times. So 
I don't understand why Jimmy Butler never held Kyle Lowry accountable. Because remember, when the rumors were circulating, Jimmy Butler sat up on that press conference and said, Kyle Lowry's not going anywhere. So that means that he wasn't holding Kyle Lowry accountable because he was supposed to be our, you know, Drew Holiday move. Just like how when the Bucks got Drew Holiday, they won the chip. I'm not saying that he would have given us the same, you know, output like Drew or Dame or Donovan, but he was supposed to be the connecting piece with Tyler, Jimmy, Bam. That's what that's what we were sold on. So I just don't understand why people don't hold him accountable. That move was terrible. Yeah, I, I like how you say holding. How about we hold fucking Jimmy Butler accountable for bringing Kyle Lowry's ass over here? For doing a one-year rental with PJ uh, PJ Tucker, like these are the, the the front office asked Jimmy Butler who he wants, and this guy said Kyle freaking Lowry. Out of all the studs, out of all the whales out there, he said I can go I can go band for band with any team in the East and the West with Kyle Lowry as my point guard, and ultimately that failed. We gotta hold Jimmy Butler accountable for putting us in this damn mess. That's who we yeah. need to hold accountable, bro. And, and they too. gave him the Lowry's thirty-five. He's Disgusting. not 31 like Drew Holiday or even Dame. Dame's younger, you know, like now than Kyle Lowry was when we got him, right? And we gave him that contract. So go ahead, Martel. No, I was saying is that like just just the overall roster, you know, construction um, like as well. Because throughout, why do you think that the Miami Heat just continued to just – because don't get me wrong. I think that the whole like undrafted thing was great and we've had some great diamonds in the roughs, you know, Gabe, Max – you know, like, and the list goes on, but why do you think that they're overdoing it and just abusing it, like, at the same time? At this point, it's almost like a crutch because they feel like they got to live up to the standard of changing, quote-unquote, let me change this broke nigga life. That's basically the Heat's motto. Let me let me find this diamond in the rough and make him a stud, make him a star, make him a, a, a serviceable starting player, even though he wouldn't start on any of the 29 other teams in the league. I mean, it's almost a crutch. I feel like we got to live to that expectation. Now they feel like they got to find that undrafted guy year in and year out. And they got to build him up to be some decent player. In reality, you can just go get veteran guys who are already established in this league. Give Spo that type of player and let him cook. Why do we always have to get the bottom of the barrel? Why are we getting D3 players and trying to get them to play D1 level ball? Like, stop doing that. It is such a crutch. I hate it. I hate it so much. But everybody talks about it. The media talks about it. Um, you hear fans from other teams talking about it. Oh, what the Heat can do with undrafted guys. And it's just like, okay, we're so sick and tired of hearing about it. I hear fans talk about it all the time. Like, as fans, we're tired about hearing about undrafted. We've been hearing this story for three, four years now, bro. Like, enough is enough. There, uh, stop the undrafted story in the Jimmy Butler era, please. Just cut it. Cut it out. Stop. Yep. Do you remember the other two, the other two organizations? I'm thinking back from, like, early 2000s, 2010s, whatever. The Spurs mm -hmm. had some success doing that. And, like, the, I live in San Francisco, so, I, like, I'm not a Warrior fan, but... I've watched my fair share of Warrior games. So, like, back in the day, they had, like, Kalena Azabuki, like, that guy Tolliver and all these other dudes. But, like, they stopped after a time. Like, they still are capable. And, like, they still do it every once in a while. You'll see with, like, both those organizations. But we have, like, continued to do that as our mantra. And there's, like, two guys, like, good for DJJ being, you know, starting four in the finals. Max looks like he's serviceable. But Tyler Johnson back in the day – like out of the league after he was off the heat after a year. He went to the Nets for like a year and the Sun. Can't believe oh. he got a fifty million dollar bag, by the way. That's, That's crazy. That's the mistake of obviously not paying Dwayne Wade, um, which is a different story, I think. You know, you mentioned that earlier. Like D Wade was drafted by this team. He was on the team for 13 years. He won three championships. Sorry, Jimmy. We love you too. You're on this team for five seasons. You took us to two finals. Like you weren't drafted here. You haven't won anything for us. So I will pay G sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. I will pay D Wade for past uh, experience and like what he did in the past versus what he was going to do in the future because he's the legacy of the Miami Heat, right? So, but anyway, Rodney Magruder, Kendrick Nunn, like so whoever many. else, like all these guys that like Namdi because of like Gabe. I mean, he got hurt. Who knows? But he could be another one. There's been Dr. like Robinson. Two guys. We need to get past this undrafted thing. And Martel's been saying it all the time. Get us serviceable dudes. Like that are veterans, give us like a not Rudy Gay anymore, obviously, but give us a Nick Batum type guy who killed us in the play and give us like a veteran guy that could be like anywhere from age 27 to 32 
I'll take that over an undrafted all day. And like, we're not focusing on that. Like, I agree with you on that. And the thing is, some of, like, to your point, some of the guys, the vets that we did go and get, like, they kind of work. We had Jay Crowder hitting threes crazy when we went and got him as a veteran. Andre Iguodala was serviceable for us. PJ Tucker was serviceable for us. If this is a winning, if this is a formula that works, why are we not continuously doing it? Why are we getting Jamal McCain's? Who's the point guard that we grabbed this uh, grabbed this season who Drew tore his ACL? Yeah, yeah, Drew Smith. I don't even know his name. I don't even remember him. Why is he on the team? Why is he here? Why is he here? Somebody tell me. Why would why do we not get DeLon Wright like all like versus him, right? Like DeLon uh. Wright is like, you know what I mean? Like give us a DeLon Wright type of player who eventually became available who's like kind of a th- I'll call not really a three and D guy. I mean, he did hit a lot of threes in that Boston series, but give us that three and D type of point guard, like versus Drew Smith, who is not even playable. That's the thing. We take too much risks on guys who are not even NBA players, man. And I'm sick of that shit. I'm sick of it. Let I, I want to ask you though. I want to ask you guys how much of that blame, because I know we constantly attack the front. How much of that blame falls on Spo? How is Spo going to bat for these guys? Because it seems like there's a certain type of guy that Spo, that always falls on this team, and it feels like a Spo type of guy, not just a Miami so, Heat type of guy. So Spo's problem is, is that like, just think about the overall roster, right? Why didn't Thomas Bryant get more minutes? Now, don't get me wrong, is Ty, like is Thomas Bryant this All Star backup big? No, but instead of running Bam out of bio into the ground. Okay, throughout the whole regular season, especially remember, we're losing a lot of these games, too. So you're telling me that Thomas Bryant couldn't get five minutes every single quarter. And if you stretch that throughout the 82 game season, how much how much of an offload does that take off Bam and a bio? And that's just one example. How is Thomas Bryant not playing for 10 games in a row, 20 games in a row? How is he not getting even just relief minutes just so that Bam can sit down on the bench and relax? I'm not so worried it's just about things that. like that because you have Orlando Robinson, you have Jamal Kane, you have Thomas Bryant, you have all Cole Swider. That's four guys that I just named on the bench that are not playing, that are taking up roster spots. So why are they on the bench then? There's yeah. multiple guys that are that that cannot play that's on the bench. And the thing is, if they're gonna be on the bench, I mean, think about Jamal Kane. He's an athletic guy, he's what, six, 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 eight. You're telling me that he can't get 10, 15 minutes every now and then? They're scrubs. I mean, the ultimate no, thing no, no, is no. I scrubs, understand though. that, but I'm talking about relief minutes. Because, once again, Thomas Bryant had a very good season last year, like with the Lakers and the Nuggets. And I'm not saying that he's a great serviceable big, but he's good enough for spot minutes. Because then what's the point of them being on the roster? We have five uh, unplayable players. I do like the point of the reserve minutes specific specifically for Bam. Because what is a trend that we're constantly seeing year in and year out? Bam starts hot. And then by the midpoint season, we yep. start to see him trend down. Dog, he's working his ass off on both ends of the court. Jimmy Butler's out. We got Tyler Hero constantly fucking out. Fucking, ugh. Everybody, we're, we're dismantled by injuries year in and year out. And Bam is having to die on the court. It seems like he is giving it his all. And he's literally being dragged on both ends of the court. He has to do so much he needs the relief minutes. We need a serviceable guy that he's willing to play. Now, whether it's Thomas Bryant, uh, probably not. But we need to address shit like that. Yeah. You know what Absolutely. I think we need, though? We need – we have good defenders around him. I mean, we're going to lose Haywood. You know, Caleb, I think he went down a little bit. He wasn't as good defensively this season as the past. But we need guys like the T-Wolves kind of formula where they have uh, Nikhil Alexander. Um what was it McDaniel, like Jaden, like they have, like those are the guys that we need around Bam out of bio so that he's not running around playing on the perimeter and paint and protecting the rim. Like he's our only rim protector and we're, we're horrible at that. Like Bam was a good blocker early in his career, like a rim protector, but he can't continue to do that because he's guarding fucking Steph Curry on and Dame Lillard. <laughs> up the perimeter, Dog, you know? Dog, I'm going to be real. We've been the, the least athletic team in the yep. association yes. for year in and year out. Where are the athletic, athletic guys, dog? We have nobody that can stay in front of their man. Like, even if you're not a great defender, 
Get somebody who can move their fucking feet. We got guys that are shuffling their feet only to shoot threes. That's the only time we see Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero get antsy with their feet work. Uh, uh, footwork. <laughs> Other than that, dog, we have nobody that can stay in front of the defender and play any type of defense because they have no athleticism. It's not necessary. Well, they're not, they're not willing to do it, and they're just simply not capable, bro. Let's just be honest with you, bro. And then we're getting 35-year-old point guards. Come on, dog. What are, what are we really expecting? We gotta, we gotta get better guys who are athletes. We have to get, we have the draft. We can address it there. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something about getting athletes on this damn team. I'm tired of seeing this piss poor ass fucking athleticism on this team. But yeah, then it also comes down to the lack of asset management, like how you also brought up. Because you know what I mean. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Terry Rozier, he's a great player, but he didn't fit this team. So, like, what I mean by that is, like, the Miami Heat, they're already starting. Like, their starting lineup has major flaws. You have two guys in Tyler and Terry who are not the best defenders, and then you have a a six five power forward. To be honest, they should have went just a little bit more in on Dejounte Murray at the time. I mean. Who knows how available he really was, but they were saying two first-round picks. But I'm cool with a Tyler Hero and a DeJounte Murray backward because <clears> DeJounte <throat> Murray, he has the defense, he has the athleticism, he's younger, he's a better – you know what I mean? Like, he would have fit Tyler Hero a little bit better. But think about it. It's like, yeah, Terry's great and all, but it's two negative defenders and you have a 6'5 power forward. And then Jimmy's – he might he might not be on the floor at that time as well. I was pushing hard for the DeJounte Murray thing, especially after we didn't get Dame – um, just simply because we need one, a three level score, a guy that can get, you know, drive to the rim and have some athleticism. Like you said, some defense. I know some, I, I feel like I'm a Terry Rozier. I was a Terry Rozier fan before he got on the Miami Heat. I, there's certain players that you like and there's, there's certain players that you like, but you don't want to see on your team. Terry Rozier is one of those guys that I didn't want to see on my team. I feel like the Terry Rozier acquisition was like, here, nigga, damn, y'all been complaining about a, a, a fucking trade? Here, nigga, damn, just here, take this Terry Rozier. Now, what I'm hoping they can do with this Terry Rozier shit is flip it. Now, whether they do that or not, I don't know. But I, I am hoping that they can flip Terry Rozier and another guy in order to get some pieces. There's some names out there. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. I, I really don't know how the Heat are going to address this offseason because this shit looks like a disaster, bro. I'm going to be yeah. real with you. Let me Chris, ask you this. So you'd, rather, you'd rather trade, you'd rather flip Terry versus Tyler? Absolutely not. I'd rather, I'd rather definitely flip Tyler Hero. Um, but I just feel like if we could flip any one of them, I'm going to be preferably both. But if we could flip one of them, uh, it would have to be Tyler Hero, of course. But I just feel like I asked the question when we first got Terry. How does a Terry Rozier and a Tyler Hero backcourt work in the playoffs? Everybody knows when you watch playoff ball, bro, it's straight switches. Man to man, hunting guys. Dog. You could play zone, you could play whatever. They're going to get a switch in the fourth quarter, and the guy's going to get hunted. I, if y'all watched the game yesterday, I love Luka. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Luka fan. They were hunting the fuck out of Luka. Like, every, they put his ass in action after action after action, and that's what playoff basketball is, dog. You can't have two guys in your backcourt who they're going to just take turns. Oh, dope. it's my turn. It's my turn. Let me get, oh, let me get this nigga. Let me, it, it, bro, it's so easy, dog. Like, you, you can't have that in your backcourt, bro. Trent, go yeah, ahead. Man. What's going on, man? You know what I mean? I just, I'm at work right now. Shit, my fault. Listen, anyways, um, nice to meet you. Um, yeah. What up? What up? Uh, my own, my own type, my own kind. Finally got on the show. Anyways, <laughs> so yo, we talking about the heat, of course. And you know, I was making a video today, and this is not my trade, mind you. This is just a kind of Bleacher Report trade, and you know, Bleacher Report has terrible trade ideas, and that's the reason why I kind of wanted yeah. to talk about it. Um, and I'm not sure if y'all talked about it already, but I seen this thing where. They're offering Jimmy Butler in the 15th overall pick for Jalen Green in the number three overall pick in Dylan Brooks. Um, you know, like, how do you feel about that? And, like, do you think – like, what direction do you think the Miami Heat should, like, go? And it doesn't got to be that trade. I mean, I think that trade's stupid. But, you know, like, is this the last season or, like, next year? You know, are you wrapping it up? Like, what you think? I saw that. I saw that. Look, I wish it was another young dude, bro. It was another young – I – I'm not high on Jalen Green, dog. I feel like he's so damn streaky. He has his moments where he looks like a stud, 
And then he has other moments where I just don't think he's locked in or he was even the best player on his team. But at, at one point, it looked like, who, oh, who's, whose team is it? Is it uh, Sengun's or, or is it Green's team? Who Who's the guy on that team? I think Green obviously establishes himself late because they started winning games or whatever. But I, I'm just not high on high on Jalen Green, to be honest with you, bro. Um, I want to move Jimmy. I said it earlier. I'm cool with moving Jimmy. Um, but for, for what? I don't know. I, I don't know. I seen a lot of trade scenarios. I seen three team trades. Um, they're cooking up a whole bunch of shit in, on the basement, but dog, I, I just, I'm not moved. I'm not moved. I want him moved, but I'm not moved. If you feel, if you feel what let I'm me, saying. Let me say this real quick. Right. And I don't know if I said this on our, in our panel over here. I'm actually excited to kind of go in a little small retool. Like I, I'll trade Jimmy. And, and, and have fun with Jaime, Jovic, you know, Tyler, if that's the case, and give me a bunch of draft capital and a, and a young player. Like, give me John thinking Minga, and I'm happy. I mean, we got the best co- we got the best coach in the league. I'm, I'm happy with that. There's no expectations. You let this team roll out there and see what we could do. And then, you know, we talked about other episodes. We can see what the draft capital can do in 2025, 2026, so we can get that star player. But I'm doing that next season. But I want to get something out of Jimmy because if you notice, and I've been repeating this shit for the last five weeks, we lost Caleb for nothing. We lost Haywood Highsmith for nothing. We lost Gabe for nothing, if Haywood signs or not. We lost Max Schroes for nothing. I need something out of Jimmy Butler because if we just, if this gets like sloppy and, you know, which I don't think it will, we don't give him an extension. He gets angry. He wants out. And we and we have to trade for something. That's going to ruin our future for the next few years. I don't care what anybody says. So I'm willing to trade him, but it has to be next season, not this year. Um, I, I just feel like we have one of the worst asset management um, in the league as far as in, in the Jimmy Butler era, at least. Um, you listed a, a, off a whole bunch of names, and I've been harping it all all the time. Dog, we didn't even get nothing for Kendrick Nunn, and he was in the rookie of the year voting at one point. Dog, you you gotta just flip these guys. Tyler Hero stock was at. We were talking about Tyler Hero, uh, PJ Washington, and maybe a first for Tyler Hero. Look at PJ Washington now, and look how Tyler Hero performed in his in, in his uh, playoff yep. redemption arc, bro. Like he was dog shit to me. Uh, he didn't show me any type of flash, like. Everybody's stock just goes down the drain. Duncan Robinson, one minute he's in, next minute you don't see him play any minutes in the playoffs. We can't keep doing that same shit, bro. It's, it's, it's crazy to me. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's bad, man, you know. Um, but um, I, I asked this question yesterday. You know, do you see a healthy Miami Heat team beating any of these teams in the finals this year? Absolutely yeah, was, not. Absolutely not. I do want to say is I just got this notification. And this is how you know a lot of people love the Miami Heat. You know the finals viewership is down by five percent from um, last year to this year. The Miami Heat had a higher rating so far than the Boston Celtics and Mavericks. And to be honest with you, I think that's a better matchup: Dallas and Ma- Dallas and Celtics in the finals. Yep. So that just shows we, we we big out here, man. Stand up, Heat Nation. It's definitely it's definitely a love hate relationship that the people got with the Miami Heat because obviously with the guys on our team, people feel like we're we're a boring brand of basketball. Duh, it's crazy how when we were in the finals, um, 2011, 2012, we were up against the Spurs and they were viewed as the boring franchise and we had the big three, baby. We was lit. I mean, this Miami, that, come on. Now you fast forward, decade later, dog, we can't even put up 100 points in a basketball game. We aren't putting up dog shit numbers. We don't have any type of star power. Um, It just looks crazy sometimes. So, like... I feel like the people have a love-hate relationship, and as far as the media, too, because what's up with these votings, bro? Bam out of bio not getting any defensive player of the year love. First team all first team all defense, finally, but, bro, how many should he have? How, like, he's the best player. He's the best defensive player in the association. Why isn't he getting that respect? It's got to be a Miami Heat thing, don't y'all think? No, absolutely. I know for absolutely. a fact. I know for a fact that, you know, Luca wouldn't be going chasing Bam that one on one matchup. I know for a fact Luca be. I mean, Luca will get his, of course. But they attacked Rudy Gobert, and let's not forget Rudy Gobert got outplayed by Terrence Mann a few years ago when he's on the Utah Jazz. He's always getting played off the court. The dude is a liability. I don't understand why they keep giving him Defensive Player of the Year, but they're hating on the Miami Heat. There's a reason why we didn't get Dame. The league wants to send a memo talking about. You know, Dame. You know, wants to go to my whatever that whole that whole saga was, man. They they hate us because they want to be us, and that's fine. 
you know, we are winning organization lately has been tough. Don't get it twisted because Pat Riley's falling is on his last leg, in my opinion. Um, he needs to prove something to me. But um, you know, numbers don't lie. So that viewership thing was very interesting to see. Like the fact that we have a higher viewership than the Celtics right now, you know, and yeah. let me ask y'all real quick. The draft coming up, is there any guys in particular that you guys would want to see added to this? Let's say the roster, let's say we run it back again on some bullshit. Is there any guys or any speci uh, specific position that you're looking at to enhance or get better or things that we got to address that anybody catches your eye? Yeah, I mean, it's more so what position. I mean, we need a big. I, I feel like there's a, there's a lot, obviously, more guards and wings out there, whether it's through free agency or the draft. Like, you can always get some sort of guard, but big men are a dime a dozen, obviously. So, I mean, I don't want Edie. I don't want Zach Edie. Like, because he, I, mean, I don't want to draft a, I want to draft someone that has potential that could be a starter, right? On the team, potentially. Um, I mean, I guess Jovic is that kind of that four, technically, right? I guess we're grooming him to hopefully be the guy next to Bam out of bio. So, I guess whoever we do draft will come off the bench, whether it's a backup four or five. Uh, Kalel Ware, I mean, is kind of like a guy who's kind of possibly ready to contribute, but also like someone that we need to build up because he'll be raw. Like, can he really shoot? Like, he could shoot in college, but does that translate over? I mean, Jaime shot 37% in college one year, but you saw what happened. He was hot in the beginning of the season, and then he shot like in the low 20s and killed us. So 21% in the playoffs, dog shit. 21%. Yeah. So I say, I say, I say either a four or five, not ED. I, I, Kalel Ware, I think, would be someone I'd be willing to take a risk on. Trent, or um, Keyshot Johnson from Arizona. Make sure you guys look him Football up. Player? He's 6'6". Six, six. Who? You know, he kind of plays like Amari Stoudemire. You know, he's athletic. He's good in transition. He can dunk the ball. You know, it's like what you said. We need guys that are going to bring, like, athleticism to this roster. You know, we just can't have guys. I mean, yeah, listen, we all want guys like Devin Carter and all this stuff. And I think that you can always get a point guard, like, in this league. But especially when it comes to, like, forwards and wings, I think it's very hard. But we definitely do need size. Listen, F all that. F all that. Listen, who we get in, man, we need a guard, okay? And Terry's not there forever. We Like you said, Terry might be flipped. We don't have no point guard on this roster. Tyler can't be that guard at all, all right? So. Uh oh. Oh, he cut up. He froze. <laughs> yeah, but who do you want? Like, okay. Maybe I'll maybe predict his you know, thought. That, like, do you want do you want a more traditional point guard like a like a Tyus Jones type, but like more elite scoring? No, like, or... I want me a young guard. We're getting ready for the future. That's all I okay. care about now. That's all I care about the future. Okay. I got a young guard so, for you. How about Trey huh? Young? Isn't Trey Young good? Don't I hate give me Trey Young. Young. I, I don't hate want him more Trae than Young. anybody. But... I don't want. Trae I, Young. I saw there's a lot of hype for Ron Holland. Um, Ron Holland, who, yeah. Who was on a G, uh, G Lee, I mean, uh, the Ignite shit. Isn't he like 6'8"? Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's a, he's around that size with like a 7'1 wingspan or 6'11", something, something like that. Um, he's but he struggled to shoot the ball. Yeah. He's a, he's a great defender, lots of athleticism, but once again, he's not a guard. You know what I'm saying? Have y'all seen the workouts that we did? Yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's scheduled for the workout. I'm also, I don't know, how, how y'all feel about adding another Nicola on this team? Topic? Oh, God. Yeah, how, how y'all feel? I, I don't know, dog. Wait, like, oh. He's I, a 6'5", Drogic, but he did have a partially torn ACL, and that's what I'm kind of worried about. We have too many We have too many white guys on our team. You Hold said up. we need to get more That's athletic. a fact. Oh, God. We're losing Caleb Martin. That he's our second most, I mean, he's probably hey, our most listen. athletic, right? Him and Bam, so. I'll say this, though. Topic is a guy that's going to be our future point guard for the team, though. That's that's a guard that you look at, okay, he may not play this season. I, I brought this up. I'm like, we need somebody to help compete now. But I'm going to be honest with you, even next year, we I don't think we're going all in. So I'm more worried about this future at this point. You know, I think an all in is like a Kyle Kuzma, Jeremy Grant. Does that get us over the hump? I don't know. I hope it does, but I really don't know. So I'm looking at the future. You're telling me you throw a topic out there with Jaime and Jovic and Tyler. That's something you could be excited about. You got to look at the future. So I don't mind the topic. I like Isaiah Collier. Um, Devin Carter's smooth and stuff like that. But this draft, there's going to be a lot of gems. A lot of, a gems. Lot of gems. That's what I'm excited about. People are saying, oh, this draft is weak, da-da-da, because the star talent isn't up there. That's fine. 
but I want to find gems. A lot of these role players, I'll tell you now, for next season, they're going to be competing for the championship-level teams coming off the bench, helping them in these big minutes, playoff games. Like, I'm, I'm watch, you'll see. So I'm fine with taking a topic. Do I see him falling to 15? I don't know. We'll see, though. I, I, I pray um, uh, Dillingham falls, bro. I ain't going to lie. I know it's not, I know it's not likely, bro. But, dog, how great would that be? Like, a real star type of player, bro, like, falling to us. I I, I need Rob on my team. I ain't going to lie to y'all, boys. I, that's, why, that's why that's my favorite player in the draft right now. Rob Allen? Nah, Dillingham. Oh, okay. Rob Dillingham? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I'm looking, cool, too. He, he, I'm he, looking at past 15s. Uh, I'll throw out a couple. There's not a lot in here that oh, are, like, God. That, that, that stand out, but you – Kawhi, Giannis. Uh, I don't know if you remember this guy. Trent, what was his name? Al Jefferson. Who? Who, bad, who are the? Who are the? Like that? Who are the last three? Let, let, let me hear the last three. <laughs> last three years at fifteen. One of them is a random Miami Heat fucking scrub killer white boy, Corey Kispert, who I wanted to get on the Heat. He can <sighs> fucking shoot three. He that guy kills the Heat. Kispert. He's not bad. Don't do that. I know, obviously, but Mark Williams on the Hornets, not bad. We could have maybe got him in the terry rogier trade but uh and then kobe buffkin i don't even know if i even saw him play a second of basketball i, I, I have no idea who that hey, guy I'll is say this. he's kobe on the hops buffkin, i would yo i met him in vegas he got yo his girl is bad his girl i was right behind him we was watching the summer league together da, da, da. his girls in front of him got his girl's number for 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 content purposes only but he never hit me back man so kobe buffkin you ain't even doing nothing right now, bro. Like, hop on the hop on the show, my boy. <laughs> he ain't doing anything. Real, he's in, he ain't doing anything, but he's in the league, so he ain't real doing quick nothing. He's close. on Atlanta. He, he's on Atlanta. He ain't doing nothing, and I want his girl. Real quick before we close, threat. Um, you know, you guys had a uh, video about some of the mistakes that the Miami Heat made. I just think the biggest mistake that the Miami Heat ever made is not putting D Wade into ownership, only because when you think it's really true, Pat Riley hasn't gotten any of these stars. You know, Victor Oladipo came because of D. Wade, Terry Rozier, uh, LeBron, Bosch, Jimmy Butler, and the list goes on. And they're always talking about D. Wade. So how on earth did the Miami Heat front office allow D. Wade to go to the Utah Jazz and sit next to Danny Ainge? Disgusting. Like we they're going to build a statue of D. Wade, but they don't want him in ownership. And it's all because the Arisons are greedy. They don't want to empty them pockets. They, they, they don't want to empty them pockets at all. Um, the way disrespect from the Miami Heat has been for too many decades at this point, dog. We, we disrespected him as a player, and now we're disrespecting him off the court, bro. Like, at, at some point, Wade's got to just be like, fuck us, which he did. Fuck us and slide to Utah and handle business and stun on our ass, bro. And, and it, it's as simple as that. They, they just don't respect him enough to, to, to put him in positions where he wants to be where he wants to be as a as a player and as a as a front office guy, dog. I I, I don't understand the disrespect. You don't treat your legends like that, and I I feel it's almost like we're paying a price for that, bro. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you, dog. We're paying the D Wade tax. Wow. Well, guys, thank you so much, Threat. Really appreciate the time, and thanks for hopping on the show. Do you want to plug anything before we hop off? We know folks can find your stuff, obviously, on the Basement Sports Network, but anything you want to shout out real quick? Yeah, not just the Basement Sports Network. Y'all already know. Y'all y'all see us all the time. Y'all talk shit. Y'all love us. Y'all hate us. I don't know. Make up y'all minds. We're going to be invading y'all timeline all off season. You know, this is this is where we make our bag. This is where we make our bag. We're going to have the spaces. We're going to have the playback. We're going to have the, the motherfucking um, YouTube running. Y'all tap in with the boys. I will be making an appearance. I, was, I wasn't I was really feeling the season that much, so I wasn't on too much of this shit. But y'all know the offseason is, is where my bread and butter is. Um, catch me in, in all of those spa all of those uh, platforms, playback spaces, Twitter spaces, of course, and YouTube. I'll be locked in, baby. Awesome. Martel, any last words? Yeah. Make sure you guys go to our channels, like, share, comment, subscribe, and we appreciate all the support.